You are listening to the At Wonk Podcasts, a show where we take a deep dive into what it takes to be successful in marketing if you are a visual artist or craftsperson. We will explore how the art world works as well as how to better achieve your professional goals. I am Neville Park, your host and resident Art Wonk. So settle in and join me as we get today's show underway. Yay! Today's podcast is called Am I a Brand? Hey everyone, welcome into this episode of the Art Wonk Podcast where we're going to be exploring brands. Now I want to be honest with you up front, yesterday I spent four and a half, maybe almost five hours working on the show um, and I went to bed thinking that the one that I'd recorded was pretty damn good. Trouble is I woke up in the morning and eh, no, not so much. So why am I worrying so much over a show about brand and what brand means? Well, because brand's really important to those of us who are visual artists or craftspeople, primarily because our brand is us. And it's really hard to separate yourself from your business when you're a small business person who actually puts your name on your product. So why brand? What's the difference between brand and marketing? And I think that's where yesterday's show was probably a little bit wrong. Uh, I spent the whole effort talking about brand and forgot to really give you a framework to look at the two. Uh, And that's an important thing to consider. Why one over the other and what the heck the difference is? So what is the difference between branding and marketing? Now, it turns out, after doing some research, watching a heck of a lot of YouTube videos and just trying to refresh myself on the specific terminology, um, there's a big argument going on in the marketing and uh, branding worlds as to what exactly that means as well. So, you know, we're a microcosm of a bigger environment, especially when it comes to business. Most of us are small businesses, uh, and if you're a gallery or an outlet for art, you somehow have to straddle a whole lot of these different business opportunities and identities. So let's look at what brand actually is. It seems the most common agreed upon term is brand is the big why behind the marketing. So it's the whole story or emotional connection that people make with you, your product, uh, and your business. Um, marketing is actually the activity of taking that story out into the greater world and telling people about it. Uh, and the two keep bouncing backwards and forwards. You don't do one and then the other and stop. It's actually repositioning constantly. So branding is everything that your business or your um, your creative enterprise has a visual impact on. Um, So for a gallery, that's things like your logo, your signage, your music, your your location, your layout. The way your business looks all speaks to your brand. It tells people about your value systems and structures, how much you've invested in it, how much you care about your business. As an artist, everything you do in the community as an artist, as an individual that's identifiable or identified as an artist becomes the same type of thing. So you don't have to have a logo as part of your brand, but if you do have a logo, if you're a potter or jeweler who has a mark, then that is a really important part of your branding. So why would we be considering that at this stage? Well, unless you know exactly what it is that you're trying to tell people, it's really hard to market. So it's worth taking a moment to really break it down and look at yourself as a brand. Now that means that you've got to be aware that people want to be loyal to brands. People actually have strange affinities with different brands. And sometimes that's because the marketing, sometimes it's more the message behind the marketing. You know, one or two of the products that we have in our house, we have because of the environmental impact that that brand, that product actually um, boasts that they either don't have or that they support. You know, we like to use products that are recycled. 
Uh, in fact, the frames that I choose to put around my artwork are recycled frames, but they're recycled plastic that's been moulded into new looking frames. Um, they're not just old frames. So, you know, there is a brand statement there that says that I'm supporting the environment with an 80% recycled product, but I'm not somebody who wants my brand to be a person who uses old stuff. You choose lots and lots of things that impact how your business looks. And what we really need to focus on today is how to be aware of how it looks. So branding is the big why that sits behind the what. Why are you an artist? That's part of your brand story. And it's something you should be sharing. Why do you work in clay? Or why do you paint? Why do you sculpt? Why are you a designer of whatever form you are? You know, these are all things that are part of your brand, your story. And you have to be aware if you're an individual business person selling a business that is essentially you, every time you go into public and talk about yourself, you're presenting your brand. And if you realize that the values that you represent, the things that interest you, the things that you want to um, engage others in being interested in as well, uh, have an impact over and above the work that you're showing them, then you can start to be aware of some of the pitfalls that are out there that you have to worry about. You know, making yourself accessible, real and relatable is very important as an artist. Um, artists, in essence, if you're a professional artist, you have to almost become, um, and I don't mean this as a, a, a jokey form, but a caricature. You amplify some parts of what you are so that people can be allowed to be fascinated and interested. We are a romantic group in a lot of people's minds. If people are sitting in an office moving paper around all day, every day, the idea of being innovative and creative and making stuff that moves people emotionally is a really cool aspirational thing. In fact, number two on the list of things people want to do when they retire right behind travel is do art. So we, we live in a place where others really want to bond with us. So when we go online or we present ourselves in a public space or in any way that's going to have an impact on those who understand what we are or we want to understand what we are, we're branding. So let's start with a, a bricks and mortar ex example because I think that's probably an easy one for us all to get our heads around. When you're looking at a gallery space, you look at everything when you're an artist looking for representation, or at least you should be. Their brand is not the advertisement that you see in the art magazines or the fact that they are sponsoring um, a particular art competition. That's part of their brand. Mainly that's marketing. What you should be looking at more is how does the place look? How is the artwork presented? How is the environment presented? Is it a place that will respond or that you can respond to um, that might respond to your artwork? You know, those things, the way the staff greet people, the look of the people in the gallery, whether they dress in a corporate fashion or really casually, the, um, the quality of the signage, the way things are maintained, that's really brand. That's, that's the value behind the message because those are the things that create emotional responses in people and enable them to then look to those responses as a way that they will describe it. You know, it's that really flash gallery in town where they have that beautiful stuff. Bit high end, but the staff are lovely. That's a statement about the branding. And that's something that, you know, the galleries should be very aware of and should be constantly revisiting and making sure every time they change something that it still sits within their brand, their 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 story, their why. Now, when you're an individual, you make your choices based on whether or not those things fit you. But as soon as you choose a gallery like the one I just described, that becomes part of your brand story as well. Likewise, if you're doing stalls, selling direct, um, whether you've got an online presence, they are all branding things. If you affiliate yourself with an online gallery that has a habit of showing really quite 
basic and not at all well finished art or has a lot of people's comments about the fact that they bought stuff through it and that the delivery times were really shitty and not um, things didn't look like they were meant to look, then that becomes part of your brand story as well because you're associated with it. So when I'm asking, am I a brand as an artist? Yes, I am. My name is my one constant. Whether I'm a sculptor or an illustrator or whether I'm working in metal or clay or, you know, it doesn't really matter what I do. I can move between all the different media that I love to work with. But my name is my brand. It follows me with all those things. It adds value to all those things. Um, and that value is the sum of all of the efforts I've put before this. So I have to look after it. I have to make sure when I'm putting my name on things that I'm actually happy that this is representative of my brand. And the same for social media. When I go out in public and I, I make a comment on somebody else's um, platform, I'm now representing my brand. It's not a marketing exercise. I'm not out there saying, hey, look at me. Hey, I'm an artist. Hey, hey, hey. Not at all. I'm mean, just engaging with a friend. But I'm doing it in a public place. And I'm doing it often from a platform where I do have my work that's saying, hey, look at this stuff. Isn't it cool? So it becomes an exercise in branding, whether I mean it to or not. I'm not trying to market myself. I'm not trying to sell. I'm not trying to encourage people to look at me that way. But they will they will use that as a way of judging me. And so you are a brand if you're an individual um, or a small group who are making or presenting stuff with your name on it. Now, you know, a big company like Coca-Cola or Levi's, their name is Levi or Coca-Cola and their brand is more than just the logo. We all know what Coke's logo looks like. But its brand is quite different again because they've spent millions and millions of dollars telling us it's different. Coke don't advertise or promote Coke as a carbonated sweet drink that may or may not rot your teeth or um, clean the toilet uh, or whatever it is that people think Coke does. Coke actually markets to an emotional state. Coke adds life. It, uh, it, it markets by showing you wonderful young people in the middle of their fun summer holidays, bouncing and frolicking at the beach. It sells emotion. And that's the thing about brand. Brand talks to emotion. You can develop a logo. You can develop a look. But you still have to actually create a connection. And the connection is something we do by being ourselves, being authentic, being in the community and making sure that every time we go out and talk about ourselves or what we're doing and why we're doing it, we are honest. We admit when we've had troubles with things, we make sure it is completely authentic because people do not trust. We don't trust products. We don't trust advertising. If you, I guess the best way to view it is if you look at the number of times when you've gone to buy a book or something online and you've looked at the reviews. Hell, even the podcasts. If you go to Apple now and you find the art wonk, people will, even though I'm brand new, have a look and see what type of reviews I've got before they get involved. That's because we don't trust. These things exist because we don't trust. And brand is about trust. It's about you being a complete package. So if you're an emerging artist and you're just coming out of art school, that's part of your story. Don't try and pretend you've been doing it forever and you're, you know, you're brilliant at it. You may be brilliant at it, but the fact that you're on the beginning of your journey is one of the things that you should be telling people. People want to support you. They want to see success. They want all of those wonderful warm fuzzies that come from finding something special and being able to tell others. You know, I listened to a marketing talk a couple of years ago, and I can't remember it completely, so I shouldn't even be talking about it. But the essence of it was that if you imagine a, a traditional bell curve, so draw in your mind the shape of a bell, um, and at the beginning of the curve is where businesses and things are taking off, and then we grow and we grow and we grow until we get to the peak, um, and then we slowly taper down as the business gets tired and old and people stop promoting and doing things until it tapers off. Now that description could be used to cover pretty much any kind of activity. 
Well, one of the big things about noise in the marketplace is that everyone at that peak of the bell, that middle group, we're all yelling for attention. Everyone out there is busy saying, look at me, look what I do, aren't I clever? And you can use that bell curve to describe any kind of marketplace. The art market is exactly the same. At the top, we get one or two people who manage to just get enough cut through that everyone focuses on them, and then everyone else gets ignored. Or at least we do our best to ignore them because we can't focus on them all. The funny place to be on that particular bell curve is at the very edges, where there's very few people competing. And that's where the art market has an absolute dream run. People build loyalty and brand recognition in that early phase and that later phase because we are able to be seen. And people will drive all the way across a big city to get their favourite coffee beans. And they'll tell their friends about the fact that they drive all the way across the big city to get their favourite coffee beans because the brand that's attached to those beans, you know, the beans are the same as everyone else's. It's the fact that they like the story behind that particular business. They like the way the young guys and girls who started the place, they set it up in a garage and they were hand crushing the beans using a hammer and a, a sock. Um, and you know that story, that's the brand. So why the rave? Well, I think primarily because we need to be aware that if we're going to market, if we're going to actually take our goods out into a place and try and extend beyond where we are now to the next level, whatever that is for you, you need to be more than just a product and a price. Those are the things that advertising works around and those are the things that marketing in terms of selling works around. That's the decision making in the end. They're going to filter everything out and they're going to look at whether or not they're prepared to pay that much for that thing. What adds the value, the actual real layers of meat, is your brand. So let's have a quick look back at that gallery space. We had a, um, a beautiful gallery, great signage, clean windows, crisp, easy to read signs inside, artwork spaced out and looking special. We look at that environment as a punter. We know it's going to be a bit more expensive when I step in there than the, you know, the novelty shop down the road. So if I walk in the door, I've already told that gallery, I'm prepared to pay. You know, I might not be buying today, but I'm prepared to pay because I want to engage in and experience this business. And that gallery is now telling a story. It's already set the framework for the story. The once upon a time is in front of me. I know the frame of the story is going to be about lush, rich value. And I can see that the person who set up the gallery has actually invested time and effort in making everything look good. So I'm going to assume they've also invested time and energy in filtering out bad. And that means the work in there by default must be good. And if I'm unsure what is good or bad, I'm going to use that framework and go, I'm going to buy here if I'm going to buy because I can trust these people. Now, if I walk in and somebody comes wandering out of the back room with their trousers down around their ankles going, yo, 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 dude, how's it going? And giving me a whole lot of street attitude, I'm going to look at it and go, what the hell is this about? There's a total incongruity here. It doesn't match. And that's where your brand values are really important. Once you start telling a story, you've got to kind of stick with it. You can change because you will change as an individual, but make the new phase of the story fit who you really are. So that was a bad mix of staff and place. They didn't quite complete the, the circle for me. You know, and when you're looking at what you're doing, how you present to a gallery is kind of a marketing and sales experience. You're going in to convince them that they should have your product, but it has to be backed up by the story of how you got there. And you know that that thing, you know, what is an artist uniform? I saw a wonderful post from a post the other day from an artist who I respect, um, who posted a picture of herself in all black, saying you're wearing traditional artist uniform. There's some expectations in some circles as to what we should look like, how we should behave. You don't have to buy into it, but you can definitely leverage off those things when it comes to making marketing um, options come alive because that's about selling an idea. When it comes to your brand, back again to the fact it must be you. If you're more comfortable in a suit 
and you've always worked in a suit and now you're an artist and you go out into the community in a suit, that's cool. That's your look. Don't, don't make yourself into something else. People want to believe in you. They want to follow you. They want to support you. So if you're trying to sell online, you're going to be making decisions based around how good you are at following up on these things. I'll take you back to an earlier podcast. Are you a, a creative or a technician um, or are you going to be a promoter? The thing that you do most and you do best should be part of your story. It's, it's all about what you are, how you work, and recognize that those skills or strengths can help you be a brand. So in my case, I choose my brand to be somebody who um, loves art, knows a little bit about it, is really generous with his time when it comes to sharing with those who are trying their hardest to work within the art world. Um, that's kind of who I am as an art marketer. Who am I as an artist? Totally different story. Who am I as a gallerist? Totally different story. But all of them have the common link of me. So when I work in, um, as an artist, I still try to be generous and sharing uh, because that's actually who I am. It's not about a conscious decision in that sense. It is very, very much about being authentic. Yeah, so what is your brand? That's something I'm going to leave you to sit and think about. I would like you to think about the things um, really not so much about your physical attributes. You know, how do I look? How do I present that way? But what are my, my issues that are really important issues that I want to make um, statements about? If you're a feminist and you believe strongly in feminism and you use your art platform as a way to um, talk about feminism, then, well, hell, you're a feminist. So don't hide that when you're engaged in um, social media or in the public activities that you participate in. Um, don't try and make yourself into a caricature or a stereotype. Be you, but maybe, just maybe, tone some of the statements back a little bit. Um, so you can still make your statements, but you don't want to turn too many people off your market. Uh, not saying that feminists are going to turn people off, but extremists do in any sense. Um, and there will be, however, a small group of extremists out there who will follow you and think you're the coolest thing in the world. The question you have to ask in the end, though, is are they part of the market that I want to talk to? Uh, and, you know, let's not make everything about money. If you're looking at exposure, you're looking at making statement art, you're looking at being shown through gallery spaces and opportunities that do not involve making sales, be who you are. Banksy started off that way. He was making social commentary. Um, the, the works, I'm still not even sure if he is a he, you know. That's the thing about Banksy. It, it, there's a mystery there. We bought into the romanticism of somebody who went out into a public arena, made social commentary um, cleverly and with skill and with humour and drew attention like a stand-up comic does to the everyday injustices in our environment. And it was free. It was accessible. That was the Banksy brand. Now what's happened is it's moved. It's moved into this place where it's now a commodity. And Banksy himself or herself has had to work really hard at keeping that sense of themselves separate from the new thing, which is the brand of selling Banksy. And that's what the galleries and the art collectors and the critics and the others have taken over. They have now defined the new Banksy brand to a point. But still, every now and again, something pops up. Like the other day, there was a, a post supposedly from Banksy's bathroom showing a whole lot of rats playing with the toilet paper. Um, and that's the thing. There's still mystery. Still not 100% sure. Was that a Banksy post or was that a knockoff? That's kind of the new brand, isn't it? So how do I present myself is your question. Make sure that if you want to be seen as a um, quality person who makes regular and reliable work, who always delivers on time, who um, takes themselves seriously and takes their business seriously, then those are the things that you should be making sure whenever you're acting in public or connecting with the public um, are reinforced. And that's through action. 
um, through being there on time, through showing up with all the right stuff. You know, that's that's your brand. Own it. If you're going to be the airy fairy farty one who kind of floats in sometimes, sometimes not, then that will be how you will be perceived. It will limit some of your opportunities. It'll definitely open other doors. Own it. One of the things we can't as an industry do is standardize ourselves or we lose our soul. So your brand is the representation of you. Uh, and I hope that this is kind of clarified. The difference that we're moving on to when we get into marketing is how to tell people about your brand, tell them about your special points of interest, telling them all those things and which decisions we make when doing it is our marketing choices. So your brand platform, the, the layer that you're building all of your business on is very personal, hard sometimes to be subjective about, but most definitely above everything else is truly interesting. I want to know about you. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know why you do what you do. I want to know how you got to be doing what you do. This is brand. Welcome to it. Own it. So, this is the second rave. I'm going to now listen to this one back and decide whether yesterday's was as bad as I thought. Uh, if you're hearing it, then it was, and I had a fun day playing with knobs and dials. Uh, I'm going to go off now and create. Um, I'm thinking instead of stacking elephants, I might beat the hell out of a stone with a hammer and a chisel. In a, in a very nice and caring way, of course, because that's my brand. <laughs> Take care, folks. We'll catch you again. Hi everyone, it's Neville here again. Hey, just before I go, I want to remind you that we now have a new email address. It's info at theartwonk.com uh, and also theartwonk.com is our website which we're in the process of getting set up with show notes and follow-up from the shows. So please get in contact us, uh, with us if you have any questions or feedback, uh, especially if you feel that we somehow I glossed over something that's of importance to you. Uh, and yeah, really would enjoy having that, that connection with you as somebody who's trying to be a creative in today's environment uh, and let me know if there's stuff that I'm missing out or stuff you'd like to know. So now I'm off to my studio. Happy creating!